Hey guys, the objective of this video is just to set up the problem we're going to be doing for hogging ultimate moment. Okay, so hogging m subscript u means the ultimate hogging moment. We're also just going to find the effective width. Now, this is our profile. We have a T beam, it's 1000 meters wide, 200 deep, 400 deep there, and 200 deep at the web here. Now, because it's hogging, so it's going to pop up like that. So the top's going to be in tension, the bottom's going to be in compression. Now, that means that our top bars, 528, so these are N28 bars, are much bigger than our bottom bars. Our bottom bars are 20 mils. So we have bigger top bars because that's going to be where the tension is, which we need bigger bars to handle that tension. Now, we have something also called the stirrups. Stirrups is sort of what encloses these bars. Their main function is shear. So we're not so concerned about that for the moment, but we just need to include it in there because it's going to affect the dimensions of this section. So stirrups is 500 N12, so they're N12 bars, these stirrups. The last thing is the cover. Now the cover is the amount of concrete from the edges to the uh, first, the first where it first hits steel. So it's first going to hit steel at the edge of the stirrup, which encloses the reinforcing bars, and that distance is 25 mils. The characteristic strength of our concrete is 40 MPa. It, the profile like this spans continuously with a span of 4 meters. So what we're going to be doing is, is we're first going to be working out the depth to the depth of the centroids of the steel. Okay, we're going to be doing that for the bottom. It's not going to be so apparent why now why we're doing that for the bottom, but for hogging you always want to take it from the bottom. So we said that the cover is 25 mils. So from there to the edge of the stirrups is 25 mils. Plus the stirrups are 12 mils. So we're going to add on 12 for the diameter of the stirrups. And to the center of the bar, we're going to add on the radius of the bottom bar. So the bottom bar is N20s, so we're going to add on 10 for the radius. So we have a distance of 47 mils. Okay? So from the bottom to the center of these bars is 47 millimeters. Now the top bars from the top, so we're going to first work it from the top and then we're going to switch it to the bottom. So once again, the cover is 25 mils. The stirrups are 12 mils, and the, de the radius of that bar is 28, so we're going to add on 14 to get to the center of it, so we get 51, which means from the bottom, so from the bottom, we're going to do the full depth, 200 plus 400, so 600 minus 51 gives us 549, all right? So we're taking distances from the bottom. It's not so apparent now why, but for the hogging case, you're going to see when we do it, and we get a distance of 47 from the bottom for these bars and 549 for these bars. And once again, this is to the center of the bars. Okay, so I've drawn this a little bit weirdly. But that is to the center of the bars. We always want to know it to the center. So right in the middle. So the formula is always going to be the cover plus the stirrup plus the radius of the bar. Okay, to get to the distance. Cover plus stirrup plus ra radius of bar. The last thing we want to do now is just find the effective width. So the effective width is given in section 8.8.2. So if I show you this, um, so this is section 8.8.2. We have for T and L beams, these formulas over here. Okay, let me just zoom in for you. Okay, so we have for a T beam, B effective is BW plus 0.2A, where A is the distance between points of zero bending moment, which for continuous beams may be taken as 0.7L, okay? So our beam is continuous. We've said over here it's continuous. So we need to take B effective as BW plus 0.2A, where A is taken as 0.7L, where L is the span. So working this out, it would be 200 plus 0.2 times 0.7 times the span, which in millimeters is 4,000 millimeters, giving us an effective width of 760 millimeters. So the effective width only acts over Seven six zero millimeters. All right. So when we go and do the calculation, if we were to do it for sagging, we'd have to dis we'd have to exclude these edges out there. Okay. So it's only this area in there. Anyway, guys, we'll see in the next video where we're going to be doing finding the ultimate moment for hogging. So we'll see in the next video. Hope that helps, guys.